Please, May. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Welcome to the Mastermind Series, where every month we learn from the wisdom of leading authors, trainers, and innovators. This is your host, Andrew Barber Starkey, and this month I'm talking to an expert, indeed a pioneer in the field of mind power. This man was born in Toronto. In 1975, he moved to the West Coast and withdrew to the wooded seclusion of the British Columbia wilderness to spend three years in intensive study and contemplation about the inner workings of the human mind. By applying his own observations and insights to the scientific and spiritual sources of the time, he created the first straightforward and successful program for helping people develop their own mind power. In 1978, he began traveling and teaching people the principles he had formulated. And by 1980, the phenomenal success of his speaking tour had grown to encompass the globe. Since then, he has taught and lectured to literally hundreds of thousands of people. He has also authored four books, the best known being Mind Power into the 21st Century, which has sold over half a million copies and hit the bestseller list in 12 countries. His other books include A Vision of Power and Glory, Money, Success and You, and its latest, The Practice of Happiness. It's a great okay. honor to have well, as my guest today. Well, let me first of all start off John by Kehoe. just for a minute or two explaining the whole premise behind mind powers and why and how mind powers work. Uh, everything in our physical universe is made up of vibrations of energy, everything. Um, the, the telephone that uh, you use is made up of vibrations of energy. Uh, the seat that you're sitting on is made up of vibrations of energy. The clothes that you're wearing are, is made up of vibrations of energy. The walls in your house are made up of vibrations of energy. Everything in the physical universe is made up of vibrations of energy. And our thoughts are also vibrations of energy. Our thoughts are the most dynamic, uh, fluid substance in the entire universe. That thoughts are a, a vibration of energy uh, separate and independent of our physical universe, and yet it interacts with our physical universe. Now, one of the most amazing things to understand is that any thought that is repeated over and over and over again in your conscious mind will take an imprint into the subconscious. Now, once this imprints into the subconscious mind, it then acts as a tuning fork. It begins vibrating, and it attracts to you the people, the circumstances, the events, the synchronicity that matches the images that you have within. That you have a very real power to influence and direct the things that happen to you working with your thoughts. Now one of the beautiful things about the subconscious mind as well is that the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So that you can program and imprint into your subconscious anything that you choose. There was a very famous um, uh, experiment done in one of the large American universities where they took a group of college students and they divided them into three separate groups and they tested them for skill at throwing the basketball at the basket. And then they recorded their scores. And what they did is they had the first group uh, come in to the gym every day for a half hour and practice throwing the ball at the basket. The second group engaged in no practice. And the third group engaged in a very different practice. What they did is they had them come into the gym, just mentally imagine that they're throwing the ball, and mentally imagine that they're scoring, doing it only in their mind. And then after a month, they brought them back and they um, tested them again. And what they found is that the first group that practiced every day for real showed an over 25% improvement in their score, which you'd expect because they're practicing. The second group, which did no practice, showed no improvement. And again, no surprises there. The third group, which practiced only in their mind, which never once touched a ball, 
interestingly enough, improved equally as much as the group that, ha- that practiced for real. Now, how is this possible? Simple. By practicing in their mind over and over and over again, that took an imprint into the subconscious. So when it came time to throw the ball, their subconscious was imprinted with the fact that they were good at throwing the ball. And it showed up, of course, in their performance. Now, the implications of this go far beyond just sports training. We can use this for finances. We can use this for relationships. We can use this in our career. We can use this to cure ourselves of our illness. There is no area of your life working with mind power techniques such as visualization, such as seating, such as affirmations, uh, such as acknowledging, such as recreating new beliefs in your mind. There is a whole number of techniques that the mind power student practices. And when you do that, what happens is you begin to take control of your life, that your thoughts are the most incredibly powerful source of, of nourishment, source of, of a dynamic abundance that we have in our life, and nobody teaches us how to think. We're taught, be positive, do the best you can. Well, I'm sorry that's not good enough. Being a positive thinker is a very, very simplistic, um, uh, basic level of mind powers. You can do a lot more than be positive. You can start to work with this dynamic, powerful forces that you have in a very, very powerful way. And that's what I teach, and uh, and that's what people prosper with. So basically, um, I think what I read in the book is it says, the powers of the mind are governed by laws, which can be easily understood by anybody. Exactly. Exactly. There's, 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 there's nothing too difficult about this. Once you awaken, and it, it is a real awakening. I mean, I know for myself when, when I first realized that, my God, my thoughts influence my reality. Not by being positive. I, I have to uh, reemphasize this point. People sometimes mistake mind powers for positive thinking. It's not just simply being positive. It's actually using techniques to imprint into your subconscious. That's the key. You want these beliefs, you want these images, not just on a conscious level, that's positive thinking. You want it on a subconscious level. And once it takes on a subconscious level, then you are uh, attracting those things to you. And, and, and there is no grating, greater turning point in a person's life to discover that I have personal power, that I am the master of my destiny, and all it takes and is maybe 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day would transform your life if you're willing to practice it on a regular basis. And if you're, you're practicing the right techniques. Yes, uh, and, and I might also mention that this can work equally uh, as well against you. Uh, your thoughts can uh, bring sickness, they can keep you in poverty, uh, they can keep you from succeeding at your goals. In fact, that's one of the great tragedies of our day is that most people are not getting ahead because, number one, they're working too hard. I'm not a big believer in hard work. Uh, I know I've, I've done talks sometimes to corporations and uh, uh, sales managers will be looking on in horror as, as I'm saying that, that maybe your problem is you're working too hard. You should never work too hard. You should always work smart, not hard. It has nothing to do with hard work. It has to do with your consciousness. It has to do with your beliefs. It has to do with your thoughts. Uh, that is what is going to create your reality. Well, what's the downside of overwork? Because I know there is one. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, downsides to overwork. Uh, number one, I don't think it's a lot of fun. And, uh, and I'm distrustful of any life that is not joyful. Uh, and when I say joyful, it doesn't mean that you're, you know, suddenly going around in ecstasy every moment of every day. But, I mean, if, you have, if, you're, if you're working these long hours under all kinds of stress, what kind of uh, quality of life is that? I mean, 
you, you, you have to insist that your life has, has, has joy and fun in it. Uh, so I think the downside of too much work is, number one, it, 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 it doesn't give you quality life. And the second downside of it is, uh, is that when you're working too hard, you're not going to get good quality ideas. And one of the things I teach is how to tap into your intuition and get ideas from your, your subconscious mind. The intuition is one of the vehicles that you use to tap into your subconscious. And there are hundreds of absolutely fabulous great ideas to help you make money, to help you uh, succeed, to help you uh, achieve your goal that you would never, ever find simply by running in your conscious mind the same old information. You have to go into your subconscious and get a whole breath of, of, of new life in, 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 in your day-to-day -day life. And when you do that, you suddenly all these insights and brilliant ideas start sparking. So this doesn't happen when you're working too hard. And sometimes I, I say to people that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're working so hard you probably won't be successful. And, uh, and they sort of look at me all stunned like, but it's absolutely true. You must give yourself good quality time and honor yourself. It's interesting because one of the things that we use in the Success Tracks coaching program is um, a time system that involves people taking freedom days. And a freedom day is a day where you do absolutely no work in any way, shape, or form. Very important. And um, often people say, but I love my work so much, I don't want to take a freedom day. And I think that you're really reinforcing that the benefit of that is when you get away from work and let go, it, it actually gives the, the creativity and the intuition a, a time to, to go deep into your subconscious and really get in touch with some of the abundance of ideas and and thoughts that are down there. Yeah, well, it was Albert Einstein who said, uh, why do I always get my best ideas in the shower? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like, just even that little time away, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm a big believer in, uh, in uh, you know, having time where you just reflect and think and get away from things. Well, and if we're still talking about the, the downsides of overwork, you mentioned earlier on that really we... Our lives, our minds are resonating at a certain frequency. We're going to attract things that are at the same frequency. And if we're in that frantic, stressful place of overwork, it's not going to really attract the right quality of things that we want anyway. Absolutely. And it's also uh, showing somewhat of a lack of self-respect for yourself and, uh, and a lack of self-image in a way. I mean, it's almost like you're saying to yourself that, I have to work 16 hours a day in order to be successful. Well, how come? I mean, I mean, you are a, a brilliant human being. Uh, there are thousands of opportunities. There are staggering opportunities to make money out of there. There are staggering opportunities to be successful out there. I mean, uh, uh, why do we have this erroneous belief that... Uh, I have to work constantly in order to be successful. Uh, now, you will find, and, I, and I've made, uh, uh, when I wrote my uh, book, Money, Success, and You, um, it was quite interesting that uh, when I was in my manuscript form of that book, I, uh, I sent the, the manuscript to about a dozen of my friends who were financially successful. And, uh, and, and what was interesting is I made a list of them. And by financially successful, I meant as a net worth of over a million dollars. And uh, as I made my list, I, uh, something very interesting came to me. I realized that every single one of those people made their money in areas that they loved. I mean, one was in home renovation. Another was in publishing. Another was a jewelry wholesaler. Another was um, a, a clothes manufacturer. That every single one of them made their fortunes in things that they love to do. And it got me thinking, uh, has anybody ever made a great deal of money by doing something that they don't love? And you know what? I couldn't think of one person. Great question. You know, I mean, I mean, not only people I know, but, but out there in the world. I mean, Bill Gates didn't say to himself, 
oh, I wonder how I can be the richest man in the world. Oh, I think I'll get into computers. He got into computers because he loved it. And that's one of the secrets of success as well, is find something that you love to do. And then, of course, if you love to do it, not only are you going to be more successful at it, but you're going to have more fun in your life. And fun and joy is, is one of the principles that I teach. Right, so you win both ways. You win both ways. I'm thinking also about the, um, the overwork and going back to the very pr- first principle I think you mentioned to us was trust the universe. And, and my thought is that one of the reasons that people um, kill themselves working so hard is because they simply believe there's not enough that they're going to fail um, and they're, they're living in fear of scarcity and, and they've got to work so hard. And the other perhaps is um, a belief that um, there's not enough they're not safe unless they have power and they're not okay unless they have power so they have to be successful in order to be okay that way so either way it's not really trusting the universe not at all i remember one time in one of my seminars i had someone and uh, i really like people to uh, clearly define their goals because it is one of the maxims of mind powers is that you must know what you want before you can get it uh, uh, and uh, and so this person was saying, um, uh, I want to be the richest man in Canada. And I thought to myself, okay, well, that's interesting. And uh, I questioned him further, and I said, well, why do you want to be the richest man in Canada? And he said, so I can prove that it can be done. And I just thought, well, what a weak reason to do it. Uh, I mean, that's the, the, I mean, the beautiful thing about life is that we get to choose whatever goal we want. I mean, isn't that wonderful? The whole free will. Everybody lives their life in a different way. Everyone can have different goals, different objectives, different definitions of success. We get to define it in our own way. But to, to, to need to do that just to prove he could do it, I thought was showing actually a little bit of um, uh, lack of self-confidence in, in himself. Uh, and the same thing in our life is let's examine why we have these goals. Uh, and, uh, and when you examine them, sometimes you find that your motivations aren't as true as, uh, as we initially thought they would be. So uh, you don't want to end up, uh, like the old saying goes, to be the man who ends up climbing the ladder of success only to find that it's uh, up against the wrong r- wall, you know. Um, that's what I think midlife crises are, are by the way. It's, uh, I, think, I think it's a wonderful thing that at the midway point of our life that our, our psyche should shake us up. I mean, whenever someone's going through a midlife crisis, uh, I always say to them, how wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> And they always look at me strange, but, but, I, but I am happy for them because it's a wonderful thing that at the midway point of your life, your psyche should shake you and, and demand that you look at your life, demand that you look at your values, demand that you look at the choices that you're making. And uh, midlife crises are never enjoyable. I mean, they're always unpleasant, and you go through anguish and turmoil and self-doubt, and you go through all these things. But you come out the other end stronger and a clearer idea of what is important in you. And uh, that's what reevaluation is. And at different stages of our life, either we take time to do that or uh, life will gift us with a crisis and make us do it. Mm-hmm. So midlife crisis is really an, an opportunity for us to, to take a look at the ladder and see which wall it's up against and whether that's really where we want to keep on climbing to. Absolutely. Right at the beginning of Mind Power, one of the things you say is the first step to changing your life is to pay attention to the flows inside your, uh, the thoughts inside your head, and then direct them accordingly. Can you talk a little about that? Yes. uh, The the every day we're thinking thousands of thoughts, absolutely thousands of them, and when when you realize that your thoughts influence, affect, and and help to create your reality then you become very conscious of what you're thinking. Uh, and, for example, let's say, uh, let's take money for an example, is when you think about money, what exactly uh, do you think about usually when you think about money? Uh, is, it, is it that money is difficult? 
uh, to make uh, that um, that there's no good opportunities out there to make money that I never seem to have enough money I mean if these are the type of thoughts that you generally think Unfortunately, what's happening is you are imprinting that reality into your subconscious. Just by your day-to-day worrying and concern about money, you are imprinting into your subconscious a scarcity consciousness. And as I said earlier in our discussion, that once things are imprinted in the subconscious, the subconscious then begins to attract the people, the circumstances, the events that match the images that you have within. So you are actually keeping yourself in a spiraling, uh, never-ending experience of frustration on getting ahead financially. And I don't care how many hours a day you work. I don't care how many new jobs you go to. I don't care how many new schemes and ideas you have. If your beliefs about money are limiting, then you are going to not be manifesting money. Now, the opposite is, is equally true. And this is the beautiful thing about mind powers, and I, I might repeat myself two or three times in our interview here because uh, repetition is, is one of the key aspects to getting things, is that your subconscious will accept any thought or belief that you continually imprint. And imprinting is one of the techniques that I teach in Mind Powers. If we have time, I will, we'll get into it in this interview. If not, then uh, uh, you can read my books or come to my seminars. I'll, uh, one hour will pass by like the speed of a bullet uh, when you have a good, interesting interview. So uh, we, we, uh, it sounds like a long time, an hour interview, but I'll tell you, it is just going to whiz by like uh, the blinking of an eye. But uh, uh, anyways, you can imprint into your subconscious prosperity beliefs. And even if you don't believe it, and this is another thing, you don't have to consciously believe it. All you have to do is imprint it over and over and over again. And what will happen is day by day, it will begin to take an imprint and you will change your beliefs about money. As you change your beliefs about money, as you take on prosperity beliefs, then what happens is that begins to attract those situations to you. So if it is uh, money, if money is uh something that is important and you do want to manifest and attract money uh into your life then you must imprint prosperity consciousness beliefs and not work with scarcity consciousness so so basically um we started by saying you need to pay attention to the flow of thoughts inside your mind yes. but it's be, it's beyond that we then need to identify them and identi- uh, or t- um, examine them and take a look at the ones that are consistent with what we what we're desiring and if we're not, um, if those are not there, then we need to redirect our mind into into a new place um, through the affirmations, through the through the mind power techniques. Uh, whether we believe them or at our deepest level or not, we can still change the subconscious mind towards those prosperity beliefs. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little about the prosperity consciousness. Um, you talk. One of the quotes I made a note of here is, anybody desiring financial independence must first develop a prosperity consciousness. Note, I said develop because it does not happen by chance. And then you want to explain your five steps for building prosperity. Would you be willing to share those with our listeners? Sure. Uh, well, let's, ha- let's start with our uh, first prosperity belief is that it is a, a, an abundant universe. And if you want to create uh, prosperity in your life, then you want to recognize uh, prosperity everywhere. You want to get into your mind on, on, on seeing and feeling and sensing and being surrounded with prosperity. Uh, for example, you can uh, uh, go down to the center of, uh, of uh, whatever city that you live in and you, you, you look at the buildings there. Well, somebody owns those buildings. Um, somebody built those buildings. Uh, somebody's living in the 
penthouse of those buildings right now. I mean, there is so much money around. There is, there is billions and billions and billions of dollars transferring in the free enterprise system hourly, money moving from one place to another, to recognize that the world that we live in is actually loaded. There is so much money out there. And that the free enterprise system rewards ingenuity and service, that if you have a good idea, a good service, a good product, uh, that you can market that in such a way as to make yourself a fortune. The marketplace does not care if you're a, a, a man or a woman. It doesn't care what your spiritual belief is. It doesn't care what the color of your skin is. As long as you have the right product or service, you can make a great deal of money. And to recognize that there are millions of millionaires out there. I mean, it's, it, it's many people's goal to be a millionaire, and I think it's a wonderful goal. If, if indeed that's what you want to do, if you want to be a manifester of money, then go out there and make a lot of it. Recognize, I think, the most recent statistic in the United States, I don't have one for Canada, but in the United States, was there was something like six million millionaires. I mean, these are not an endangered species. So if they can do it, why not you? Are they any different from you? Not at all. Uh, as I say, with prosperity consciousness and uh, good ideas and initiative and finding your calling, um, there is no reason why you can't make a great deal of money. So the first prosperity belief is that there is, it is an abundant universe and that there's lots of prosperity out there. Staggering opportunities, that's another one of my prosperity beliefs, is that there are staggering opportunities to make a great deal of money out there. I'm always amazed when I uh, um, speak to people on how it is that they've made their money, successful people. I remember one uh, person that took uh, my training in... Um, in New Zealand, actually. I do travel and teach all over the world. And he called me out and he said, John, I took your training a number of years ago. I want you to come out. And he, uh, he had a chocolate brown Rolls Royce out there. And uh, he said, this is all because of your teaching. And I said, well, great. And, uh, and I said, well, uh, how did you do it? You know, what idea did you use? And he said, well, I opened up a backpacker's hostel. And that led into a string of backpacker hostels, and he's a multimillionaire. Now, who would think that operating a backpacker hospital, uh, a hospital would, would produce millions of dollars in profit? But nonetheless, it did. There is so many ways of making money out there. But you've got to find something that you feel good about. Well, I was going to say, that may take us back to the importance of doing what you love and knowing that even if you limit yourself, quote, by doing only what you love, there's still a huge number of opportunities to, be, to, to um, operate and to be successful. Absolutely. Another one of my prosperity beliefs is that it's our duty and responsibility to succeed. And I spoke about that a little bit uh, earlier in our, in our talk here. Um, and that... And, and I'm, I, I really think that each and every one of us um, brings to the table a little piece to the puzzle, that each of us uh, has an answer to some solution or problem or difficulty that we have here on this planet, that we're all plugged into the same system, and that... Uh, that we really have to honor what's calling us because uh, that is what is not only going to make us successful, but that is what is going to be our contribution to our fellow members here in the human race. Mm -hmm. Like when I, for example, honored that calling to leave my, my, my business as a rock and roll promoter, I mean, I was making a lot of money. Uh, I, I, I was having fun with it. It just, I just heard that little call within me to move on, 
Now, as it turns out, uh, at the time, of course, it was it was a bit of a traumatic decision. It wasn't like, oh yes, I'll just do it. I mean, I I waited up pro and con, had a few sleepless nights over it, and until I, you know, ultimately made the decision. But um, but now, you know, twenty years later, uh, I can look at it and say, well, wow, what a uh, fabulous decision that was, because not only have I been tremendously successful in my new calling with uh, uh, you know best-selling books and and successful seminars and traveling around the world and 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 uh, uh, having a fun profitable interesting life I mean not only that but look at the hundreds of thousands of people that I have got to touch and teach uh, on how to work with the powers of their mind I mean isn't isn't it great that I did honor that, uh, because if I hadn't, then a different destiny would have um, befell me. So by honoring your, your calling, it's not a selfish thing at all. In fact, it's, it's really an opportunity for, for the whole world to receive your work. Absolutely. You have to follow your bliss. What is it that makes your heart jump for joy? You will never be successful doing something you don't like. You can make a living doing something you don't like, but you will never be tremendously successful doing something you don't like. Mm -hmm, Which, I guess, leads us back to prosperity consciousness. Yep. I want to go back to your explanation of imprinting, because I really did feel quite impacted by the way you said it. What you talked about was that really resonated for me was you said, when we go to school, we learn our times table. Yeah. You know, 7-6 is 42, and um, I could remember that at gunpoint in a... um, you know, waking up in the middle of the night. Yep. Um, It's truly imprinted in my mind. And you talked about the way we, the importance of imprinting uh, the the messages that we, that will support us into our subconscious. Could you expand on that a bit? Yes. Well, we've, we've used uh, imprinting twice already in our, in our life. As, as you mentioned, the multiplication tables. I mean, if I was to say what's seven times seven, immediately we know it's 49. You know, what's What's 8 times 10? Well, immediately we know it's 80. Well, how do we know those things? Well, because they've been imprinted countless number of times. 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21. You know, it's been imprinted over and over and over again. Yet if I was to say, well, what's 13 times 8? We wouldn't know. And the reason is they only taught us to 12. You know, they, they felt it was. The thing is... The multiplication table is imprinted into our consciousness. We, what's 12 times 12? 144. We know that. The same thing with our language. Our language has been imprinted into our consciousness. Uh, uh, that's why we can have this interview, and, and we can understand each other's words, because the, the vocabulary has been imprinted in, into our consciousness. So those are two examples of imprinting that have happened in our life. But the third and the most fascinating and the most challenging and the most interesting imprinting is for us to imprint empowering beliefs into, into, into our consciousness. And you do that much the same way as the multiplication table. What you do is you take a belief that you, that you choose to believe. For example, uh, the very first time that, that I imprinted into my mind was during my time in the cabin. And I, I wanted to imprint into my mind that I have unlimited power at my disposal. So what I would do is every, every evening before I went to bed, I would take out five minutes and I would think about the fact about the powers of the mind and about the power of choice and how I can choose my thoughts and how thoughts have power to them and that by choosing your thoughts you can direct and influence your your uh, your actions and you can create vibrations of energy within you that will attract realities to you and that this is very powerful and that I have unlimited power at my disposal so what I would do is I would spend five minutes every day contemplating this thinking about it, affirming to myself that I have unlimited power. Sometimes when I would do it, I would get really excited. It would be like I'm, uh, you know, I would come out of my little five-minute exercise uh, and just feel really empowered, and yes, that's true, and it's great, and it's wonderful. Other times when I would do it, it would be almost like I was lying to myself, you know, like, 
who are you kidding? You know, you don't have my unlimited power. And, and, and sometimes it would be like I was fooling myself. Sometimes when I did it, it would be very cold and mechanical. And other times it would be exciting and inspiring. But the key here is I did it every day. I charted myself. I never missed a day. Whether it was exciting to do it, whether it was boring to do it, I did it every day. Mind powers needs repetition. And somewhere along, uh, somewhere between 60 and 90 days, and that is a very, very um, key in imprinting, uh, is that it needs time. But somewhere around that 60 to 90 day period, I remember waking up uh, and just waking up with this flaming reality that I have unlimited power at my disposal and I knew it I owned it it was imprinted and from that point on I have never ever doubted it Mm -hmm. much the same as I don't doubt 7 times 7 is 49 I mean I don't have to go to my calculator and say is it really 49 or is it 48 I don't have to double check I know it's 49 I don't have to double check on how much power I have I know that I have unlimited power at my disposal. So it's, it's simply repetition over and over again for even up to 90 days. Exactly. It, repetition is the key with mind powers. This is the difference between positive thinking and mind powers. Mm-hmm. Is positive thinking is that think positive and positive things will happen to you. And I've nothing, you know, no bone to pick with positive thinking. I'd certainly much rather you be positive than negative. But mind powers is taking it a step beyond that. What it is, is it's defining very clearly what it is you want. And then through techniques of affirmations, visualizations, imprinting, acknowledging, creating new beliefs, by actually putting these things through repetition so that your subconscious mind begins to pick up on it. And repetition is the key. You don't have to spend a lot of time with mind powers. You can, as I said earlier, you can transform your life with as little as five, ten minutes a day. But you do have to um, do a little bit of work every day on it. Uh, It doesn't happen magically. You have to be giving yourself the right messages. And you do have to be giving yourself the right messages. You talked about acknowledgement, and um, I know that you you absolutely use it as one of the techniques for gaining confidence and and energy. Um, Could you um, give us a little explanation of how that can be part of our our daily practice? Yeah, in the acknowledging technique, what I suggest that people do is they make a list of at least 15 or 20 things that make you feel really good and successful about who and what you are now. And the key is now. Too often what happens is that we are always thinking about the goals that we want to achieve, uh, things that we're going to do, things that we're going to be, changes that are going to happen, always out there in the future. And, and, and that's fine. I mean, to ha- that you have goals, uh, that there's not, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, what you want to do is you want to create a vibration of success now. And, uh, and nothing succeeds like success. Success is a vibration and it attracts more success to it. So what you do is you make a list of at least 15 or 20 things that make you feel really good and successful now. And they can be very simple things, like I'm a good parent, I'm a safe driver, I dress well, uh, I have good ideas, uh, I'm a good friend, uh, I make a great omelet, uh, uh, I know how to close a business deal. Uh, uh, put personal things down, put business things down, just things that make you feel successful about who and what you are now. And what you do, and when I say 15 or 20 things, some people have acknowledging lists that are like 50 things on it, but uh, y- you can add to it. And what you want to do is you want to spend five minutes every day going over this list and feeling really successful about who and what you are now. And that creates a success vibration now. And that success vibration now attracts to it 
future successes. It's a really simple and yet incredibly powerful uh, uh, technique because what will happen is if you start your day with this technique, then you start your day in a success vibration. So it's another way of imprinting, really. It's another way. Well, well everything, all mind powers, really is, is imprinting. Whether, uh, visualization as well. Uh, visualization is really uh, imprinting into your consciousness uh, the exact goal, seeing, feeling, tasting, vibrating exactly what it is that you want to have happen to you. But one of the key, one of the keys and one of the tricks with visualization is that you always visualize it as if it's happening now. See, a lot of people make the mistake as they visualize that they're going to achieve it, that they will achieve it, that, that, that it's something happening in the future. In the visualization, you want to visualize it as if it's happening now to you. It's a little trick, like, for example, uh, the example I used with the basketball. I mean, they, they, they visualize, they imagine that they were throwing the ball. They imagine that it was scoring. The same thing with your visualization is whatever it is that you want to have happen in your life, whatever it is, what you do is you visualize it as if it is already happening now. Now, you don't have to hang on to that all day. That's another mistake people make is they, have, they think they have to hang on to this feeling desperately. You know, every day I can't ever let a negative or contradictory thought in. You know, I have to defend this at all costs. Not at all. Relax. Take it easy. As long as you're doing it for five minutes a day, every day, the subconscious mind will quite naturally pick up on it. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, I'm going to switch books on you now because um, I've read also the, the Practice of Happiness, and it's just such a delightful book. The the principles that you put in it, and the and the way you illustrate them with examples from your own life, and then and then go on into greater depth. And it's just it's such an inspiring and um, easy to read, almost compelling book. I I kept saying, well, I'm, I'm just going to put it down after this chapter, and then I get to the beginning of the next one, I I wouldn't be able to put it down. <laughs> and, oh, that's great. Um, I just absolutely loved your story in there about gratitude and really how gratitude is a matter of perspective and the, and the letter you received from your friend um, you know, talking about his misfortune and how you suddenly realized that it's, it's all perspective. Yes, yes. Well, uh, I, well, thank you for sharing that because uh, th th that is my newest book and, uh, and uh, of course the Mind Power book is uh, everyone loves it and I get... Uh, uh, you know, so much feedback about that book and how it's transformed people's lives, and and uh, and and I love hearing that. But uh, when when you have a new book, then it's really great that uh, uh, to hear the feedback from the new one, and it's uh, just recently been released. But it seems to be touching people deeply and uh, really inspiring people, and uh, that thrills me. Uh, the story you're speaking of, and under the uh, chapter of gratitude. Uh, it tells the little story about um, when I was in the cabin, and it was uh, during the winter, and the, the stove was going out all the time, and I, my money was running down, and I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing, and uh, and I was just kind of one, and you know, feeling pretty miserable actually, and uh, feeling, uh, you know, what am I going to be doing, and doubting myself, and all this was going on, and um, I, I walked. Uh, um, through the woods and into the where the dead end road was and uh, where the mailbox was and uh, there was a letter from my uh, my friend Rinchen who um, I lived with when I lived in Singapore and we traveled all over uh, Southeast Asia together and into the Himalayas and Nepal and had a wonderful uh, uh, times with him and anyways he uh, lost his leg in this freak accident and uh, and. And so as I'm walking back to my cabin, I'm just suddenly realizing that here's my real good friend, and he now just has one leg. And here I am in my cabin, and, uh, and I have my two legs. Like, what right do I have to be miserable? And, and it was then that I made a list, uh, and, and, and that probably started off the acknowledging. I made a list of all the things in my life that I had to be grateful for. And I was amazed that there were so many things that I was to be grateful for. 
And then that evening, and I, and I um, you know, lit my uh, by kerosene, and I was lighting my kerosene lamp, and and I was um, by myself, and I, and I'm, I, and suddenly that evening, I, you know, the stars are out, and I'm just so grateful to be alive. And I thought to myself, well, what a change of perspective. Here it was this morning. I was just incredibly miserable. And here it is tonight, and I'm just filled with gratitude. And yet nothing has changed in my life. The only thing that has changed is my perspective. Mm -hmm. And then it got me thinking, maybe it's all perspective. And uh, and I made a little point at that point in my life, as I share in the book, to find something every day to give gratitude for. And I very rarely miss a day, and that was 25 years ago. That's fantastic. And, and um, we're going to run out of time, but I want to lead, uh, take one more step beyond that if we could do it. I know you were quite a philanthropist, and um, I'm wondering if you could talk to us just briefly about giving as it relates to receiving and and um, how giving impacts yes i'm 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 a very very uh big on uh balancing giving and receiving and uh uh and 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 i think we're very poor receivers by the way uh i have a whole segment that i teach on receiving and the importance of receiving but let me talk a little bit about giving, and uh, I believe in in tithing. And tithing is giving a percent of what you earn away from yourself. And when you do this, uh, I and it can be any percent that you want. Uh, I like to give away ten percent. Some people give away one percent or five percent or you know twenty percent. Doesn't really matter. But it ne- psychologically, it needs to be a percent. And when you give, when 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 your income comes in, and you realize that a percent of this does not belong to you, that it must be given away, uh, and you give it away to different communities or charities or individuals or somebody, you know, playing the guitar on the side, and you think, okay, well, I'm going to give that guy ten or twenty dollars. Uh, that's tithing. That's giving away or writing out a check to a homeless shelter. That's that's tithing. And when you when you create a a, um, a, uh, a practice of this, then what happens is uh, it, it's one of the strange and mysterious laws of the universe is that whatever we give away from ourselves comes back many fold. And the mistake that people make in tithing and giving away from themselves is they is they say to themselves that I will, uh, I'll give away as soon as I have some money. You know, as soon as I get ahead financially, then I'm going to be real good at giving away. Wrong. You give away now. You give away out of your lack. If you were down to your last thousand dollars, one of the most powerful things that you could do would be to give away a hundred. Because let's face it, if what's the difference between a thousand and nine hundred? I mean, <laughs> you're still kind of, uh, you know not in a very good situation but psychologically and spiritually and and uh you're, you you would have created an immense amount of personal energy so i am a uh, i believe in philanthropy and that's actually one of the wonderful things about being financially successful is that you get to uh, uh help a lot of different individuals and organizations and uh, i believe strongly in that but uh you can't wait until you're financially successful. You have to start your program right now with your humble little beginning, whether it's even 50 or or $100 a month. doesn't matter. It can make a huge difference to you and other people. Well, and that brings us wonderfully full circle because those that have a hard time giving away don't trust the universe. That's right. That's right. So um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to wrap up. John, I know that many of our members are going to be interested in looking further into your work, and um, I was very excited to hear that you're going to be one of the speakers at Peak Potential's Wealth and Wisdom uh, Seminar this fall, so that's one way people can um, see you and and hear your work. But for those that don't want to wait that long, can you tell us uh, about your website and um, how to get there and what people can find there? Yes, if uh, I'm well, but uh, let me also add, I'm also looking forward to uh, being there at the seminar. We're going to have... uh, 
a fabulous time together, and uh, I, uh, I love sharing uh, this information. Uh, for people that want to know more about my work, uh, you best log on to my website, and that is uh, learnmindpower.com. I mean, if you want to learn about mind power, then come on to learnmindpower.com. And, uh, it's all run together. And it's, it's all run together there, and uh, that can let you know about my tours and where I am. And uh, I'm a bit of a gypsy. I go all over the world, so you sort of catch me when you can. Now, people can buy your books um, directly from the website. They can also get them at most of the bookstores. Yeah, the, uh, I, on the website you can get uh, books, tapes, and videos, and uh, my books are readily available at all bookstores. Fabulous.